Okay, in this problem, we're asked to first rewrite our equation in the form f equals c, and then assuming that f equals c implicitly defines z as a function of x and y, we're asked to calculate the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the partial derivative of z with respect to y. And then finally, we are asked to tell what conditions must hold in order for our implicit function theorem to tell us that um, our equation f equals c actually does implicitly define z as a function of x and y. Okay, so we're given that our equation is x plus z plus y squared equals 2 plus z cubed. So first we'll get this in the form of some function equals a constant. 2 is our only constant, so we'll just bring this z cubed to the other side. So we, we get that our function f of x, y, z is equal to x plus z plus y squared minus z cubed. And then we're looking at when f is equal to 2. Um, okay, so now we want to, now we're assuming that f equals c implicitly defines z as a function of x and y. And by doing so, we're asked to calculate um, the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So first, the partial derivative of z with respect to x, we know if we've assumed that f equals c implicitly defines z as a function of x and y, then it's equal to the negation of the partial derivative of f with respect to x over the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And then also, the partial der derivative of z with respect to y is given as the negation of the partial derivative of f with respect to y over the partial derivative of f with respect to z. So it looks like we need to calculate three partial derivatives, which can be given just by taking the gradient of our function f. So we'll go ahead and do that. So our first component is just 1. Second component is 2y. And our third component is 1 minus 3z by taking the partial derivatives of f with respect to x, y, and z, respectively. OK, so we have our partial derivatives. Now we can use this information to plug into our um, equation, and we calculate that partial derivative of z with respect to x is negative 1 over 1 minus 3z squared by just taking our first component the negation of our first component, dividing it by our third. And then our partial derivative of z with respect to y is just negation of our second component, negative 2y, over the quantity 1 minus 3z squared. So these are our partial derivatives. If we've assumed that z is a func or f, of f equals c implicitly defines z as a function of x and y. So in order for um, us to be able to conclude that f equals c implicitly defines 
z as a function of x and y. We need that the partial derivative of z to of f with respect to z to be non-zero. So we know our partial derivative of f with respect to z. And we'll see at what points does our partial derivative equal zero. So we'll know at what points um, our um, assumption holds. So we have z squared is equal to one third, and that implies that z is equal to plus or minus um, the square root of three over three. So that means that if z is equal to either the plus or minus the square root three over three, then our partial derivative is equal to zero. So that means that we cannot conclude that at those points, z can be written as a, can be implicitly defined as a function of x and y. So at all points for z not equal to plus or minus the square root of three over three, um, we can assume that our partial derivatives are given as follows, or as determined before.